Hi, and welcome to Cybos at Finextra TV. And today we're going to be talking about a recent MISA survey uh, conducted by Finextra looking at trends in transaction banking. So joining me today is Lars Milberg of SEB. Uh, next to him is Rashi Smita from Citi. Uh, Ken Stratton from DBS. And last but not least, uh, Oliver, can you just uh, pronounce that for me? Bertie. Bertie, very good, from MISA. Today we're going to be talking about uh, trends in transaction banking, a, a survey Finextra conducted with, uh, with MISIS. Now, uh, what came out in this survey was that uh, reducing IT complexity, reducing cost became a, a dominant theme. Um, and in fact, about uh, half of those surveyed, about 45%, claimed uh, that their infrastructure was a multiple core processing system. So given that reducing IT complexity w w was, a, was a major theme of the survey, um, and yet 45% of those surveyed uh, claimed to have multiple core processing systems, I mean, what does that number say to you? Do, does it say, does it show that there is really a demand for payment hubs? Is this where banks are heading towards? What we're seeing is, um you know, there are a couple of trends which are driving this. I think um, globalization is reasonably irreversible. And as, as more and more banks um, look at us here, we're either regional or global. And when, you're, you know, when your customers want to start buying from you and being served more regionally and globally, it, it's an added impetus to what's a pretty good cost discipline anyway. So I think the trends we are seeing um, in response to that is one, centralization where appropriate. Uh, we're seeing standardization of platforms. And uh, the third thing I think we're seeing is banks um, in the current environment uh, are looking to whether they want to build, buy, or ally, rather than, rather than just uh, do it in-house. I've got to say, over the, the years, we've spent a lot of money at different banks on technology. And yet, a lot of lessons learned on that in terms of what is the right infrastructure, consumer bank, corporate bank, can they use the underlying same infrastructure. Um, still a lot of mistakes being made across different institutions, a lot of costs being incurred, and people looking at it a whole lot differently now. Are you seeing that as well? Well, yeah, I agree uh, to both, both of you guys. Uh, what I see also that uh, we have um, in some way put our, our processes into the, into the hands of the customers. And I think we need to change that attitude and, and start thinking more like the, the customers we are working with. Uh, that would mean a hell of a lot of work on the uh, infrastructure because we are talking bank language to the customers. And we need, need to change that one. So, but it, would it be like moving towards payment hubs would allow yeah. you to serve I think the from a systems mm -hmm. point of view, uh, part of the industry has gotten a little bit ahead of itself. Okay. Um, and it's through the drive toward more customer service, centralizing around the customer process has pushed a lot of IT rationalization at the front end, mm -hmm. but actually pretty little at the back office so far, at the back end level. Uh, payments, which you've mentioned also, I think it was something that came out in the survey, yeah. uh, is the typical place where you need a lot of rationalization. And it's also some quick wins that can be obtained from there. Because there are so many regulatory changes around payments, that's normally one that uh, a primary focus. But we actually find a similar need for rationalization at the back end, which has not happened yet around uh, trade finance and around cash management. Mm -hmm. There is still little um, uh, centralized IT infrastructure to support all that. Yeah. Even if the channels now are getting much more, much more aligned and much more unified, uh, again, driven by the need to service the customer accordingly. That sort of moved me into my, my next question. I mean, it, according to the survey, about 77% uh, claim to have created a centralized transaction banking group combining trade finance and, and cash management. And we've seen a lot of this in the press. But what does this actually mean? I mean, does it mean they're all on the same floor? Or does it mean that they've actually integrated their back office payment processing? So uh, we integrated that at City in 2007. In fact, that's, that's the job I run for your Middle East and Africa. Yeah. Sort of just share the journey a little bit. I, I, think it, uh, I think it means four or five things. As is frequent, I think let's start with the customer. So if you look uh, from, say, 2007 or 2008 from the crisis onwards, um, the treasurers in, uh, in large corporates have been very empowered. And that empowerment and their role change manifests itself in four or five ways. Priorities of the treasurer today 
uh, liquidity, generation and management, their risk management and managing counterparty risk. It is securing supply, right? It is um, managing DSO, you know, uh, days payment outstanding, the whole working capital cycle, and it's cost and efficiency. And, you know, if you really start looking at it, taking Lars' point earlier, from a pure customer point of view, cash and trade are instruments for the same commercial activity. It's bank language. So, and combine the fact that the treasurer's remit has broadened, we're really seeing this as very real. So, um, you know, we started talking about this uh, in the case of Citi, we call the receivable side, you know, the order to cash cycle, right? So the client receives an order, you know, they do a purchase order, uh, somebody, you know, uh, they do an invoice, somebody pays the invoice. The instruments underlying that may be cash or trade. And on the other side, we now talk about procure to pay. So you start talking and defining your business around the customer domain and around working capital, you know, you find that, you know, it's got to be integrated. Moving it back to, to the client, um, you know, online channel development, mobile development figured very heavily in this survey. You know, are we seeing a, a demand uh, from clients for uh, mobile banking, uh, for uh, online channel development? Well, uh, to be honest, I haven't seen a lot of demand from the, for the mobile aspect of it. A lot of people talk about it, they express interest in it, and they have discussions on it. But I'm not sure I've seen anybody make great inroads. How about, how about, on, how about online? Oh, online, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, going back to the point before about cash and trade, bringing a channel together that has the same offering, cash, trade, FX, the whole working capital channel offering. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of banks have made progress with DBS Bank of, of um, uh, a, compi a combined channel. Um, it makes a lot of sense for the corporates. It makes, um, makes life a whole lot easier. But then you've got the regulatory aspect that comes into, we're in some unusual markets that you've got to, there's some real challenges on that, that regulatory side of it. But definitely corporates um, are looking more at the front end the combined platform, but then they're looking for the bank neutral platforms as well, like Swift and Bolero and and those those like. I mean, isn't there a thing with the online with more online channel development that sort of corporate banks are looking at what the retail bank is offering, and then they kind of want those services yep. on the corporate side? I got a slightly different view from, from uh, Kevin here on 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 on, on uh, mobile, uh, and I guess it's geographical because in my patch I have the Africa and the Middle East as well. Um, and we're seeing three trends on, in the mobile space with corporates. The first is what I call access. So, you know, think of a, a treasurer traveling to Cyboss or Eurofinance in a lounge needing to authorize a $50 million payment. Very happy to do it on the mobile. So that's just taking the traditional banking business but making it available from an accessibility point of view on mobile devices. That's here and now. The second trend that I see is what we call conversion. And when I say conversion, it is the typical example of the uh, retail goods uh, distributor going and delivering six cans of soft drinks to the corner store and getting paid cash. That start happening on mobile, you know, with all the efficiency, cost, and insurance saves with that. So I think that's conversion, which is really what we call cash to mobile conversion. The last one, we're seeing a lot in the public sector client base, and that is really how do you, when you're doing social benefits payments or disaster payments to you know, the more disenfranchised parts of society, people on benefits and things like that, may not have access to bank accounts. How do you use the mobile to, to, to really make payments into, into that particular populace? Those are the three trends we're seeing in the corporate uh, lens. Come back to mobile, the primary, on the corporate side, the primary demand that we see for our solutions, the online part powered on the mobile, is primarily uh, remote authorization, which is the example you've touched on, and notification, yep. pushing yeah. notifications. Those are the primary ones. Issuing a complex transactions on the mobile, no. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm on the road. Whether actually, it's interesting because we see similar demand from SMEs. Um, to the corporate treasurer of the really large organization which is really on the road quite a lot mm -hmm. and this demand around yeah, authorization and push notification. So the use cases are still quite limited um, but of course getting used to, do, to, to have this device and being able to do those services from a retail as a consumer um, more and more is pushing the same demand on the corporate side. Yeah. The primary trend from a transaction banking point of view for the channels that we see is obviously which you touched on as well the unified services. 
uh, that's that's really the primary one. Maybe coming back to the previous questions you had is what does what does it mean being in the same building, mm. having organized all those things? Definitely having one unified channel. That's one we see is mm. is happening, and the other one is that there's one boss. Mm. There is one boss for trade and cash. Beyond that, the operationalization of this new organization with trade and cash has not necessarily happened in as many, I think, organizations as we had uh, as respondents in the survey. Have really 77% of banks having really one transaction banking head, mm -hmm. and maybe a single way to go to market with a product. Have they really unified all their operations? Have they, do they have everyone in one building or whatever it means? Um, I don't think we're there yet. Lars, I wanted to, to pick on you because you, you, you mentioned earlier uh, in the discussion about uh, banking language and communicating with, with corporate clients. Now, you know, sort of the communication between banks and their corporate clients, you know, explaining regulations, ex explaining payment processing, has often been uh, considered very poor. You know, have there been a lot of moves from banks to actually improve uh, their communication between themselves and, and their corporate, co corporate clients? We have turned the corporates into banks with our processes where we have divided our product approach in different silos, historically. So they have built up like a bank, more or less, if you take a large corp. Uh, what we now try to push uh, as being one of the banks to actually have the same head for, for the cash and trade and receivables business uh, is to pick up the language that the corporates are used to, as you were alluding to earlier. You need to understand that they, if they are producing air compress compressors, they, they have the same process all the way until we meet them. And then we start you know, looking into different markets and put different instruments on it. Totally uninterested for a corporate. So enhancing the communication, uh, using the latest technology, u using personalized dashboard functionality that you can tailor made what you want as a treasurer or what kind of function you have in a corporate. I think it's super important and we can only do that by working really close to the corporates. We are doing that normally with our, with our bank that we are picking up a couple of them, large blue ships, and then we develop together with them and some system providers. And one of the challenges I see looking after the sales business at DBS is how do you get the right staff who can talk about all of these things? Mm -hmm. you, know, you can have that working capital model, you can have the cash and trade, but a lot of the time people tend to, to play to their, their strengths and there's a challenge to get a cash guy to sell trade and so forth, but that's changing. We have to, because we have to be seen to add more value, we've got to introduce efficiencies to a company. If, if we go in there and there's three or four other bankers sitting out there, what are we as an institution going to bring that's going to make them valuable and they're going to say, don't need the other three bankers, this guy has really brought value to us. That's the real challenge and what we're all trying to deliver. What we're seeing is that the banks which have been at this for a while, you've got three steps in the process. You've got what we call product, which is often are not capabilities, right? Payments or, or, or receipts. We've then got a sales organization, right? Which I think historically had probably taken some of these capabilities and crafted them while sitting across in discussion with a the customer. There's a middle layer emerging called different things in different banks. You know, you hear of solutions teams, you hear of proposition development, you hear of market management, but I think that's the layer where you take core capabilities like Lego blocks and you put them together to prepare the sales folk to be able to have those customer relevant conversations. So that middle layer is I think where people are in the stage of evolution to it. I think it's kind of, kind of from, from a sales perspective and we have been through this journey now and we are in the middle of it. Um, I strongly don't believe that we can train people to master all the disciplines because we need to be so in depth in our knowledge to meet the blue ship companies uh, where we work anyway. My idea is that we group them together. We s they have the same customer portfolio and we we'll measure them on the total instead of the indiv individual product. That will automatically enhance their, their, their approach to, to, to the client portfolio if we can get that going. And that's a challenge, even that. So, um, but there are a lot of banks looking at what they call verticals. I mean, FI is a vertical. <laughs> Public sector is a vertical, but I think what you're, what you're going to find is you, tech companies will become a vertical and, and consumer and healthcare type of company. I think, you know, because your solution packaging has to be above, somewhere more relevant than the one size fits all, mm. but not customer by customer because that's not a, 
yeah. the I mean, I, I think I think everything we looked at could could be we could talk for a very long time. So I'm conscious of the time. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for all of you sitting down, uh, talking about uh, trends and trends and transaction banking. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.